Hey, what's up, garden friends? How's everybody doing? Jeff, your tropical plant party. I hope you're good. I am great. And I'm repotting my alpinia today. I'm repotting a lot of things today, actually, hence the mess that is my life. You gonna be my helper, Toby? Probably not. Yeah, you say hello. Good boy. And stand right in front of me. Perfect. Alpinia zarembat, variegata. This is a variegated shell ginger. Hey, don't, you're really getting in the way here, bud. What are you doing? The variegated shell gender, like I just said. Beautiful, gorgeous variegated striped foliage. They are hardy zones eight and up. Sorry, I keep laughing because the dog he keeps licking me. Hardy zones eight and up. They're a plant that likes a lot of warmth, a lot of humidity, good amount of airflow. Just bring that up in case you want to keep this in the house. Even though they are rated zones eight and up, I have overwintered these here in my zone 6 garden. I'm in 6B. It was in a very warm spot with a lot of mulch on top of it. And the growth that came out of it the next year was just like dismal. Terrible. It only grew like, I don't know, maybe a foot tall. So not much of the roots survived. But there are reports of people growing these in zone 7 year round with just a lot of winter protection. Now if you don't live in a place where you can grow this outdoors all year as a perennial, then you can simply lift it from the ground if that's where you've had it, if it's in a pot bring it inside. You can cut them back all the way. You can see down here, you can see where this has been cut. They are <laughs> rhizomous growers. So you can take those rhizomes that are in here and um, just store them for the winter time. Repot them when things get warm and they'll come right back for you. These should have nice wide foliage, paddle shaped. Them being cupped up like this is one of the reasons I know that I need to repot this. And because no matter how much water I give it, it's just not happy. It needs to be repotted. So when you have these plants in a situation where they're just not responding to being watered, that usually means new pot, or maybe it's time to divide them up. I don't need to divide this one up, but I'll talk about that in just a second. Oh, it smells like ginger. So in here, you can see the new growth coming up from down beneath the soil. This soil is still fairly moist, which it better be because I watered this thing like crazy. and. Still, not happy. But loosen up that root memory a little bit. Now, if I wanted to divide this, I should go through and clean out the dead stuff that's in there. It's just good hygiene for the plants. If I wanted to divide this up, then I would clean out as much of the soil as I could from around those rhizomes that are in here and take a very clean, sharp, sharp, sharp knife and make nice clean cuts. I could probably, with this particular plant, depending on what's going in there, get at least three divisions out of this. And then repot them all separately and they'll take off and do their thing and fill back out and then eventually that'll have to be divided again too. And I do normally recommend with something that does need to be repotted or divided often to not use a pot where the top is smaller than the sides. This one's like just barely in there so I think it'll be okay. The reason that the top should be just the same size or larger than the sides is because it gets really hard to lift that root memory out. You have to come in with a knife and cut the whole thing up. It just, it gets really dirty. It's just not the most ideal way to keep the plant when you're going to have to pull it up a lot. Like probably yearly. They grow really fast. You can put them in as big of a container as you want and then obviously you won't have to repot it as often. Shell gingers can go from full shade to full sun. The more sun they get, then obviously the more water they're going to need. And indoors, as much light as you can give them and humidity and warmth, really. They make an okay house plant if you have a really bright, warm place to keep them. Otherwise, I think it's a little bit easier to keep them someplace that's a little bit cooler and a little bit more dry. Give it an occasional drink just to kind of keep things going a little bit. Then when it gets hot, move them back outside. They take off again really fast. They like an organically rich, well-drained soil that does hold on to a little bit of moisture. In here, I have blended up just a standard all-purpose potting mix with another potting mix that has a lot of compost in it, but has a lot of sphagnum in it. I've also added sand, some orchid bark, and a heck of a lot of slow release fertilizer. A little bit of holly tone could be helpful too, because slightly acidic is really good for them too, but they're okay with just a neutral soil as well. But a lot of tropicals benefit from their soil being slightly acidic. Not all tropical refers to a location, not necessarily an environment. And being something that can grow in zone eight, that means it's not technically even truly a tropical. It doesn't have to be, although it, it's a native range is tropical. 
But yeah, these are gingers. Gingers are very, very, very heavy feeders. So I put a lot of slow release in there. The compost is mixed in with this potting soil to enrich it, give it some organic matter. Espoma biotone to help get those roots taken off. That's a big one that helps a lot. And I'm planting this one a little bit deep in the pot, probably, well, about an inch down. That's about where you'd want it anyways. I like for them to be planted a little bit deeper so that I can really heavily soak them when I water them that have soil and stuff flushing over the sides of the pot. That can get really messy. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a quick drink just until that water starts coming out the bottom and I'll be done with the repot. Part of my nails. You, you know what's going on here. Not gonna water it in too heavily because I'll have to pick this up and move it and I'm on my tarp right now. Don't need to get things soaking wet right here. Just right now, not at this moment. It was actually good timing as I was getting ready to repot this. Somebody messaged me on Instagram and mentioned that their alpinia, their variegated shell ginger, is to a point where it's like outgrown its huge pot and kind of asked what they should do with it. And that's something I'm trying to answer right now. If it gets to a point where you can't bump the pot up because it's so big and you're watering it and watering it and just watering these things and they're not responding, that's when it's time to go ahead and get in there and start dividing the plant up. Give it a cut back because they just don't really like being torn apart, and most plants don't, but a cut back right around there, and then go through, segment it out with a knife, and repot them. That's it, it's pretty simple. I know, very casual video, things are kinda messy and chaotic. I'm in the middle of doing a lot of things. Looks like there's like a plant explosion out here. That'll all be in like the next vlog, I think, after this video, like maybe a couple videos from now, I'm not sure. It's just the weather's been unpredictable. I don't want to bring the nice camera outside if it's going to rain, so I'm sticking with one that I don't really care about getting wet as much. Other things to note with this beautiful, gorgeous ginger is that they have really pretty flowers. The flowers are pendulous, usually kind of a white with some pink in them. They hang down from the ends of these stalks. Now, these only flower on old growth. So if it, you are someone who is going to be growing this in a situation like I talked about where you need to overwinter it or bring it inside or do a cutback, let it go dormant, you're probably not going to get flowers out of them. Not unless you can keep the growth going for a couple of years, and then maybe you'll get some flowers. I get flowers of mine about every other year. This one is on its second year, so hopefully that I'll get some flowers sometime this summer. But uh, not without that repot. That's why I went ahead and did that. It was really important to get that done. I just went in and I put in a little bit more slow release because, like I keep mentioning, they are very, very heavy feeders. And this, like, the whole thing sort of sank down a little bit. So I could probably add a little bit more soil to it. But otherwise, I think it's fine. Because it's more like an inch and a half to two inches down. So that's not great. I'm going to bring that up a little bit. But otherwise, that's pretty much all there is to it. They're really fun, easy plants. Good for shade, sun. Indoors, they might get three to five feet tall. Outdoors, they can get eight to ten feet but I don't think that's like quite as common, but they do have that potential. And if you are growing it outdoors, they will fill in an area very nicely. One of the things I really like about them is the variegation, not just because it's really pretty, but because it lights up at nighttime. If you have lights outside, the lighter foliage reflects that, draws your eye back into the darker areas. It's just sort of nice to have around and it smells good too. The flowers smell nice. When you repot them, you get that refreshing ginger scent. I don't know about eating this one in particular, but I have heard that the foliage, you can make like a tea out of it. Do that at your own risk, okay? Just do your Googling. I'm not saying that you should, just saying I've heard of people doing it. What have some of your experiences been with the shell gingers? I know a lot of y'all are down there in Florida, so comment down below. Are they just like invasive and crazy for you? I mean, I feel like they spread slow enough. It could be controlled fairly well and just, you know, dig up and hit them and whatnot. But maybe not. I have seen like really big drifts of these before on people's properties down south and they're beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Oh, I should point out there's like white residue on here. I hit everything with DE powder last night because there are like a bunch of snails and things around. So that's just some of that on there. Uh, indoors, because they like a lot of moisture, should have said this before, sorry. Fungus gnats could be an issue. Sometimes putting a couple inches of sand on the surface of the soil can help with the fungus gnats because they breed down below the soil and I've, they tend to not like to go through that. The mosquito bit granules tend to help with that too. The, and uh, I was going to say improving airflow, but not really. Fungus gnats are just a pain. They're really just obnoxious. A sand trick that does work fairly well, but it makes it a little bit messier when watering. You have to water slowly because otherwise sand just goes all over the place. <laughs>
as this adjusts to being repotted and everything, I'll post updates on my social media. That's all linked down below. I use Instagram like way more than anything else. So I just like have bad habits about remembering to get on the other one. Sorry about that. I do wish I had one that I could do some dividing on so I could be more specific when talking about that. But like I said, this one's not quite there yet and my other ones really aren't either. A lot of them I already divided just this last fall. And then those ones I just uh, stored them as dormant. And then the ones that didn't need to be divided, I kept them growing in my growth space in my garage. So I just, I'm sorry. I don't want to cut it up if I didn't need to. I hope everybody's doing well. Don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up. It helps the videos a lot in the channel. I really do appreciate it. So thank you and subscribe as well and hit the notification bell. That way you know new videos come out. I upload multiple times a week. And comment down below. Just say hi. I love talking to everybody. I thought about doing a time lapse of the leaves opening back up, but... I just repotted it and they tend to kind of throw a little bit of a fit sometimes for a couple weeks. Although I really didn't have to mess with the roots too much. It's kind of pulled the roots out the bottom and ruffled the sides a little bit. So they actually probably may not skip a beat. We'll see. Like I said before, I hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. Yeah, pull these guys out too. And as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye -bye.